Hi, I'm Dale Johnson, and thanks for visiting the Smith Equipment YouTube Classroom. In this lesson, we're going to go through the proper equipment setup for cutting with an oxypropane cutting torch. Similar procedures could be used for using propylene. I'll also be demonstrating some basic cutting techniques and the proper way to shut down the oxyfuel system. As we begin our process today, a few things I want you to know. First of all, be aware your cylinders are secure. Before a regulator is attached to an oxygen cylinder, crack open this valve to blow out any dirt or debris that might be in this connection area. Attach the regulator securely with a wrench. Notice the angle of the regulator is somewhat in an upward direction. On the propane cylinder, do not crack the valve. Simply inspect to make sure there's no damage or debris in that valve connection area. Attach the propane regulator securely with the wrench, but in this case, note, it's a left-hand connection. If you look closely, you can see a groove or a machining groove in the connection nut. That will always refer to a left-hand connection. It, too, is pointed somewhat in an upward direction. On the outlet side of the propane regulator, this, too, is a left-hand connection. As we inspect more parts of our system, the hoses are in good repair. Looking further downstream to our torch, we'll see that there are flashback arresters installed between the hoses and the torch. The torch we're using today is called a combination torch, a Smith Equipment brand combination torch. What that means is by combination that you can take it apart in the middle, you have the option or choice to put in heating tips, multi-flame tips, or a brazing or welding tip. Today we're going to be simply using the cutting attachment for a cutting application. Simply hand tighten. The tip we'll use today is a propane tip, an SC40-1. Let me show you that. This is a propane cutting tip. It's a two-piece style tip. There's a little spring right here and that's purpose to uh, keep the shell from falling off. That's one purpose. Also notice there's a recess in the tip face. That would signify a propane style tip. Simply put it into the torch head. Place your tip nut around that and firmly hand tighten. That's all we need to do. Also uh, on a combination torch like this, there are three valves. This valve is our fuel shut off. This oxygen valve will be opened all the way when we use this as a cutting torch and we'll adjust our oxygen from this forward oxygen valve position. Now, let's go back to our cylinders. We're going to put some pressure into the system. Open your oxygen cylinder valve slowly until the needle comes up and stops and then open this valve all the way. You'll see pressure showing now on the high pressure gauge Nothing shows on the outlet side yet. The adjusting screw is loose and wiggly. On the propane side of the system, similarly, open this valve slowly, but all the way. There's no pressure showing here yet, or showing on the gauge. This tip style, that, or the tip name we're working with is an SC40-1, and that refers to SC heavy duty. 40 is a propane style, and number one is the size of the cutting tip. In order to set the tip correctly, I'll refer to the cutting charts found in the owner's manual. There's other literature where this is, can be found, and it's also available on the Smith Equipment website. We will dial in some working pressure. On the propane side, we'll dial in 10 pounds. On the, set, on the oxygen side, we will dial in 40 pounds. The next basic step to follow would be purging. I want to make sure that the right gas is at the right place far enough downstream in the system. In order to do that, now that we have pressure there, crack open the fuel side and let it run for a few seconds. Fuel only is coming through the torch. Now shut it down. Similarly, on the oxygen side, we will also run oxygen through the system by itself for just a few seconds. That way I know that oxygen and oxygen only is in this side of the system. Now that we have pressure in the system, let's do an inspection of our work area. We want to make sure that all combustibles are, are removed, should there be any. There's a working fire extinguisher close at hand. We also want to do a leak check. 
make sure all the connections that we have in our system have no leaks in them. One way to do that will be using an oil-free dish, uh, dish soap and water solution, okay? As you apply that to all connection points, if there was a leak in the system, you'll see very obvious bubbling action occur. Should that be found, tighten those connections, repeat on your leak check. As for personal protective equipment, safety glasses will now be changed into cutting glasses. Now, safety glass clear is fine if you use a full face shield. I happen to be using a shade three cutting glass today. Shade five would be acceptable. Leathers, over garment, now we're ready to light the torch. Using a friction device, not an open lighter, open flame I mean. Crack open your fuel valve about a quarter turn. We have fuel only at this point. Reaching for your forward oxygen valve, add oxygen. You'll notice as we add oxygen, all the flames come back to match up with your primary flame points. That's not enough flow in the system yet. Add more fuel. It'll mushroom out possibly, add more oxygen. The flames will recede to their lowest position. Add fuel again. Add oxygen a third time. You will commonly start to hear a bit of a shrill noise come out of your torch tip and that is an indication of proper fuel flow. All right, now, a neutral flame is what we need to have for cutting off ap applications. One way to test for that is as I bring my tip close to the metal, a star pattern will come out across the metal face. That star pattern should be approximately two to two and a half inches. That's a little short. That would indicate I have too much oxygen. As we reduce the oxygen a little bit, That's about a two and a half star pattern coming from the flame. Let's change the oxygen one more time. I want you to see an obvious change. Here with excess fuel, the star pattern is very long. As we add oxygen again to an excess point, that star pattern is very, very short and sharp. We have a neutral flame. Now we will begin to make a cut. What we're going to do is use this flame to get metal up to temperature. Once that orange look is achieved, we'll depress the cutting lever to make our cut. Hold the tip approximately a half an inch from your workpiece. Cut is made. Now to extinguish the torch, turn off the oxygen valve, turn off the fuel valve. The torch is now safely shut down. The next step, as though we were at the end of our day, we're going to shut the, the complete system down. There's three steps. Go to the source, shut off both cylinders, we'll trap gas to our approved storage devices. Everything is shut off. Step number two would be to drain out the system of all gases. Open the torch fuel line. These needles now go to zero. Shut the valve. Open the oxygen line. These needles now go to zero. Shut the valve. And you can shut this valve on the butt end of the torch now as well. The third and final step for complete shutdown would be to back out the adjusting screw until no pressure is felt. It's very loose. The system is now completely shut down in a safe manner. This in no way covers all of the safety rules and procedures for safely operating this equipment. Be sure and carefully read and understand the OxyFuel Equipment Manufacturer Safety and Operational Instructions before operating any equipment of this type. Also, be sure to look for upcoming lessons on the Smith Equipment YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.